So in this game, we haven't been doing the best. We had three kills and we've been using the vehicle to get through the mid game. I just stopped here to refuel and then I get cracked. Now, the best thing you can do in this situation is just run away. I could have popped out of the vehicle and challenged this guy. However, I didn't know his exact position, although I did know he was in this vehicle and I had no plates. When you have no plates, the best thing you can do is disengage. So I head for this building here, hoping I can break line of sight with the guy behind me. Unfortunately, this guy actually has a C4, which is quite rare for people to be carrying in this game. So I ditched the car and then managed to dispatch of him quickly. This is by far the most overpowered strategy in solos because when you jump out of a car like that, nine times out of 10, that enemy is going to follow the trajectory of the car, leaving you to have a free kill. It was imperative for me that I managed to get out of that car quickly and then dispatch of that enemy quickly because I had no plates. He could have taken me out extremely fast. Luckily in this box that I found in this room, I find a UAV, which is incredibly clutch. If you notice on the map here, my positioning is not the best. I don't have the high ground and I'm in a building literally all on my own in the middle of the zone. The issue with this is, like I've said in previous videos, is I am now completely surrounded. Whichever way I try and rotate out of this building, I'm going to find myself in a bit of trouble. As you can see on the UAV, there are people literally in every single direction. So my best bet and your best bet if you find yourself in this sort of situation is just to stay put, stay still and wait for the zone. Obviously, if you're going for super high kill games and you can get a bit more aggressive. However, I'm literally stuck in the middle of nowhere and my vehicle has been destroyed so I have no option but to sit still. Now because I'm in this last power position in this very open space it means that anyone who is rotating in from like Tarak village and Ronan oil anywhere from the west of the map they're probably going to see this building and want to take it for themselves as it is the last vantage point on this side of the circle. Because of this I need to make sure that I'm listening out for as many footsteps as I can and to be honest it probably didn't help that I was chatting to a friend in discord so I did have to tell him to be quiet a couple of times just because I needed that information. Now, right about here, I hear the enemy's footsteps coming in from my right. I know that I have the advantage because he cannot get up into this building from that door to my right. And if he loops back out of the building, I'll hear him. And I also have a clear line of sight on the door in front of me. But I know because he has no idea where I'm here, most likely he's going to try and come up the stairs. So I listen out, I wait for my cue, and then I beam him with the Fennec, throw a stun to make sure that if anyone has followed him that's ready to third party, they get stunned. And then I finish him off with my RPK. Now the problem that I have here is that I have to go for his bag to get extra plates. I have no spare plates on me, but the problem is the bag is actually glitched in the wall so I can't even loot him. This means that if anyone tries to push me, I'm going to be shit out of luck because it's only going to take like one or two bullets before I'm put on my ass. Luckily the Warzone gods bless me and I get audio again and I'm able to drop shot this guy with literally one HP. And ironically this guy actually probably saved the rest of the match for me because I was able to take his absolute plethora of plates and he had a self revive for me too. So now I find myself in a much better position than I was in before. I have the zone closing in on me from behind and once that hits me, I know that that portion of the map is going to be clear. I don't have to worry about searching behind me because the gas is clearing it for me. And in these late game situations, sometimes it is better to play the edge of the zone because it does mean that the gas is going to do a lot of the clearing and a lot of the worrying for you. This means that I'm able to focus on getting into the new zone. However, like lots of things in this game, it doesn't always go in your favor and the zone pulls completely to the opposite side of the circle and it's going to force me to cross the water, which isn't ideal. At the same time as this happening, I did notice that someone had crept in down below me. I thought I heard a noise, but it was masked by the sound of the circle closing. So I popped down the stairs and what do you know, a little Timmy hiding in the bathroom. So again, I take care of him quickly with my Fennec. This is why I've said in so many videos that the Fennec is an absolute must to keep in your back pocket. The Fennec absolutely destroys anything at these close ranges and as a result, you really don't want to be caught with any other weapon in these sorts of situations because especially if the other person has one, they're going to absolutely decimate you. So after a quick loot up, I decide that the best thing to do is try and cross the river. What I don't want to do is cross in the middle of the open there, which is still in like the desert area. So I beeline for these trees and then what I do is I go underwater for as much of the journey as I possibly can. If you didn't know, if you dive underwater, you pretty much can't be seen in this game. The water is really murky and from above, you are almost in visible. So now I've reached the other side, I realize that there's only six people left. This gives me a really good chance of winning, especially because I can see that there is a mortar strike going on the other side of the circle. This gives me valuable information because I know that there's at least two people over that other side. Also, because two people have died, I now know that I only have to worry about potentially someone being down below me on the rocks, as well as someone being back behind me on the left. However, I am in a very good position because I know that the zone is going to close in on me, meaning again, it's going to clear that dead space 
behind me and in the water and I'll be able to creep up on top of this wall here and hide behind the garages. So before I actually commit to jumping up on this wall, I need to make sure that no one is going to run behind those garages. I need to make sure that I am safe from my rear before I can focus all of my attention on what's going on in front of me. So I scout it out for a little bit and then I pop out my fennec again because I know that any sort of engagement I get into from here is going to be in that short range. So I creep along the side of the wall and I can hear someone in the garages to my left. There's only three people left so this means that I know for a fact that I'm here, there's someone right to my left so there's got to be someone out in the open here. This guy jumps out as I'm trying to mortar and I actually get extremely lucky because he doesn't see me but he does get the notification for the mortar so he knows which direction I'm coming from. I managed to hide behind this little bit of wall here which gives me great cover and then the mortar strike actually gives me valuable information by telling me that not only am I hitting that guy but I'm also taking off armor plates. So I crack the guy here and then I realize that I have the best position left because I know for a fact that both of these guys are in front of me and I know that it's very unlikely that someone's going to push right around in the gas here. I know that I can focus just on my right hand side and I'll be able to take out anyone who comes too close. I keep checking that gas to make sure no one's coming and then as I peek right I notice that a guy has just come round. He's led down prone but it's the guy I cracked earlier and he obviously didn't have any plates so I'm able to take care of him pretty quickly. However I am getting shot in the back now and this is where I make a fatal mistake. I run into the garage and I decide that my best play is to plate here which I shouldn't have done because it means that I get caught with my gun down and then I get mowed down and I come second which is extremely frustrating especially when you're trying to get content for YouTube. However it does teach us a valuable lesson because I knew that that guy had cracked me he knows that he has to push me in order to win the game. I do have two stuns on me so once I got inside that garage if I wasn't plating I could have sprinted which would have given me more time got my gun up and thrown both of those stuns which would have caught that guy as he full sprinted around the corner leaving me to jump around the corner and put him down obviously the power of hindsight is a wonderful thing and when you're in these situations you don't always think like that but what I'm trying to say to you is that you need to make sure that you have your priorities right when you're either plating reloading or trying to get some stuns off in this situation the best thing that I could have done would be to stun this guy because then I would have had the advantage in the fight and it wouldn't have mattered that I had low health because he wouldn't have been able to see me or wouldn't have been able to react to me jumping out of this garage so I would have been able to kill him and get the win. However, in the heat of the moment, I decided that the best thing I could do would be to plate up and this is what cost me the game and I think that these sorts of priorities is what's costing a lot of you the game. But anyway, I really hope that this has helped some of you guys out and I really hope that you enjoyed this style of video. For those of you who have watched me for a while, you'll know that I love to see you sticks around until the end. So if you're still here, I'd like you to let me know by answering this question down in the comments. Would you rather have Christmas every single day or only once every 10 years? Anyway, that's it from me today. I'm Average Joel. Peace.